Another great use case for phone verification and phone data is two-factor authentication, so securing online accounts. The reason that this is so important these days is because basically every day it seems like there's a new data breach. So if you follow the news at all, I'm sure that you have heard of many of the big data breaches that have happened. And those data breaches, they don't just include credit card information um, and identity information. In many cases, they also include usernames and passwords. What that means is that if you have a website or an app, it's really difficult to know when someone comes to your website or app who's entering in the username and password for a particular account. Is it the good user with their username and password or is it some fraudster that has stolen their username and password? And so one way that you can try to protect accounts is by using two-factor authentication with a phone in any case where you're not sure whether it's the good user or whether it's a fraudster. And this could be like if someone's coming in from a new device or if they're coming in from a new IP address, whatever it happens to be where you don't necessarily recognize them. And so the way that that works is pretty simple. The user enters in their username and password as usual. You show them a notification that you're going to need to further identify them. And then you send a one-time passcode to a phone number that's already on file. The legitimate user receives that one-time passcode. The fraudster does not receive that one-time passcode. And so in this case, the legitimate user is able to access the account while the fraudster is kept out of the account. Now, what we've seen is, yet again, fraudsters being tricky and not giving up easily. And so they have found that one way to get around this type of verification is to actually take over a person's phone number. And so there are a few different ways that that can be done. None of them are very easy to do, but they're all possible, especially in the case that there is someone in particular that they're looking to target. And so the three main ways that fraudsters gain access to someone's phone number are via a SIM swap, which I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, uh, via a phone number port, or via call forwarding. A SIM swap basically entails a fraudster getting a brand new SIM card and putting your, the victim's, phone number onto that SIM card. And the way that they do this is typically the fraudster already knows basically everything about you. They know most likely your name and address, maybe some more personal information. The fraudster can either walk into the store of a mobile network operator, a carrier, uh, your carrier, or they can go online or they can call the call center for your carrier. Whatever way they do it, it doesn't really matter. The point is they are going to pretend to be you and they're going to convince your carrier to change your phone number from the SIM card that's currently in your device to a SIM card that they control. And they typically do this by saying that they're you and they've lost their device and they need a new device or a new SIM card because the device has been lost and they want access to their phone number again. So in some cases, the carriers will catch that this is not the right person, but if if you try long enough as a fraudster, you'll eventually get to someone who will do what you want them to do. And so they'll find someone, they'll get the phone number switched to a SIM card they control, and then at that point they go to whatever account they're trying to break into, enter your username and password, they're coming from an unknown device, so the website will ask them to do a two-factor authentication. At this point though, the fraudster has access to your phone number, so they actually receive the code that's going to your phone number and are able to log into your account. That's how SIM swap is done to Typically. However, that can definitely be stopped with carrier data. So if you know that the SIM for a phone number was changed today, and especially if it was changed in the last hour or 15 minutes, you can understand that this is a very risky transaction. If somebody's trying to log into their account, the SIM was changed 15 minutes ago, basically you can stop that login attempt with this data and be pretty sure that you just stopped a fraudster from accessing someone else's account. 
An attack very similar to SimSwap is phone porting. And so the way this is done is very, very similar to a SimSwap. The only difference is that rather than targeting your carrier, your current carrier, the fraudster targets another carrier. So the fraudster, again, gathers as much information as possible around you. They figure out which carrier you're currently on. Maybe they've tried the SimSwap method and your carrier didn't let it happen. Regardless, they then go to another carrier, say essentially the same thing that they are you and that they want to open an account with this new carrier and they want to port their number from the current carrier to the new carrier. The new carrier tries to identify that this is you, they try to make sure in most cases, and then once they're convinced, they go ahead and port the number over to this new account. So at that point, the fraudster now has access again to your phone number. They do the same thing, they go online, enter your username and password into whatever account they're targeting. The website will typically ask them to do a two-factor authentication, and then at that point, they the website will send a one-time passcode to your phone number, but again, the fraudster has access to your phone number, is able to receive the one-time passcode and enter your account. So this is another type of attack where the fraudster takes over your phone number, but it's also another type of attack that can be stopped with carrier data. And so the carrier data that can stop this is the last date and time that the phone was ported. Um, if the phone was ported again, like 15 minutes before a two-factor authentication attempt happens, it's a really good indication that this is probably fraud. If it was last ported a month or two ago or six months ago, whatever, it's probably the legitimate user. And so you can be pretty confident um, in allowing the good user in for these older ports and blocking the fraudster for these brand new ports. One last way that fraudsters take over victims' phone numbers is via a call forwarding attack. And the way that that works is the fraudster, once again, pretends to be you, calls into the call center of your carrier, um, and asks, very politely typically, to forward your number to a number that they control. And wanting to provide the best customer service available, carriers will go ahead and forward the phone number. Usually the story is that you're traveling and that you need to be reached somewhere else, so the phone number gets forwarded than to a phone number that the fraudster controls. At that point, they now have access to any one-time PIN codes that are sent via voice to that phone number. So they go online, they enter in your username and password, they choose to receive a PIN code via voice, and they get the one-time passcode through the call that's sent to your phone number, enter that into the website, and they're able then to access your account. The good news about this um, is that the only data that's needed to stop that type of fraud is also very readily available at the carrier, and that is, is this phone number currently forwarded, and to what number is this phone number forwarded? With that data, it's pretty simple to see uh, whether this is an attack that's happening or whether this is a legitimate user. So of course, if the number is not forwarded, it's most likely a legitimate user, or if it's been forwarded for maybe a week, this person's been gone for a while, that makes perfect sense. If the phone number was forwarded as of 20 minutes ago and it's forwarded to, for example, a VoIP number, that is a much more risky forward and can be used to stop the one-time PIN code from being sent to that phone number.